Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a Dell Venue 8 Pro tablet. It's an 8-inch Windows 8.1 tablet with an Intel Atom Bay Trail processor. You can use it in portrait or landscape mode, and you can run a variety of different types of applications, including sort of full-screen uh, Windows 8-style applications and desktop apps as well. So it's a, a full-fledged tablet that's about the size of an iPad mini or a little bit larger than, say, a Google Nexus 7 tablet with a 7-inch screen. Uh, similar in overall size and weight, it's maybe a little bigger, a little chunkier. Um, but if you wanted to, you could use it as an application, as an inexpensive tablet for uh, Netflix and Kindle and these sorts of full-screen applications for watching movies, uh, reading books, surfing the web, and so forth. Or you could run full desktop applications. We've got the Chrome web browser here, the uh, OneNote application, and uh, Microsoft Office as well. So it's uh, pretty versatile and pretty inexpensive. It has a starting price of just about uh, $300. This uh, model has an Intel Atom Bay Trail Z374D processor. Uh, Atom sort of gets a bad rap. Uh, over the years, it's been a lot less powerful than uh, more expensive chips. It's still less powerful, but it's much more powerful than it used to be. And if you wanted to, you could plug in an external keyboard and mouse and display and use this like a desktop computer. And it's really got the oomph to run some desktop style applications. But in terms of size, it really sort of works best, I think, with uh, full screen applications. So for instance, when we're looking at desktop mode here, um, I've got all of the, uh, everything sort of scaled to 125% so that the text isn't too small to read. Um, let's take a quick look around the device. We've got volume buttons, power button, and with Windows 8 style apps, hitting the power button just sort of turns off the screen. So if you're listening to music, for instance, it'll keep playing. Uh, over here, there's a little uh, door that covers an SD card slot, and we've got a micro USB port. There's one more button up here, which is a Windows button, and you press that to bring up the start screen, sort of like uh, the Windows button on a keyboard, and then there's a headphone jack, and that's about it. Um, the micro USB port you'll notice here is the only port, so that's actually how you charge it using just a basically a standard uh, USB style adapter, USB to micro USB. So it's very small, very portable. You'll want to use the included adapter if you uh, want to charge relatively quickly. I found that it charges very slowly if you use third party adapters. And um, that also means though that if you do have external devices plugged into the USB port, you're not going to be able to charge it at the same time. Now it does support Bluetooth, it does support uh, Miracast wireless display, so you can hook up a keyboard, a mouse, and other devices using wireless connectivity instead of USB if you wanted to. Um, let's see, take a quick look at a couple of apps here. Um, like I said, we've got the Kindle application. It handles video just fine. It's got a 1280 by 800 pixel display. Um, we're looking here at the weather application. You can see that overall things are pretty responsive. And uh, let's go ahead and open up a book. Now normally on a device this size, I find it comfortable to sort of hold this way and, and read, but because this is sort of widescreen, I feel like it's just large enough to make two column view more comfortable, and I find myself mostly reading using it in, uh, in landscape mode. Uh, pretty comfortable to hold, but uh, the amount of text I find is just a little bit more comfortable this way. But it's nice to have those options. So um, let's see, let's go back to the desktop view here show you the on-screen keyboard. Now when you're running sort of Windows 8 style applications, the keyboard pops up automatically. Uh, when you're running uh, in desktop mode, it does not. So you have to tap a button to get it to work. And that's one of the problems that I think a lot of people have had with the sort of two view version of um, Windows, where you've got the desktop versus the um, full screen experience. So it's, it takes a little getting used to, but it does it does work. I think you're going to have a better experience, though, if you Hi, did. Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and these are two tiny devices that are designed to let you take media from a phone, tablet, uh, or PC and send it to a television. So over here we have the $35 Google Chromecast, which is a very simple device. That it's got the audio playing, playing in the background here. From uh, certain apps to your TV. And this, is a fun and this is the sort of situation where I would hit Control-Alt-Delete, but uh, I can't. There we go. 30 versus 35. 
and it can work as a mirror cast adapter or and so that's a pretty good example of the frustration that you might get when you're trying to use uh, Windows 8.1 on a touchscreen only device. Now, like I said, you can use external keyboards and there will be an external uh, official wireless keyboard for this device, um, but it is not available as of the time that I'm writing this review. Now, what you do have is support for a digital pen. And that's one of the things that helps set this $300 tablet apart from many others is the fact that you can uh, use this pen to do some nice things like, let's go ahead and uh, maximize this. Uh, say you wanted to um, go to the C drive and hover, it'll hover. If you were going to web pages that have drop down menus, you can do that. If you wanted to preview different applications, you can do that. So it gives you some of that capability that you would normally have with a mouse but instead using a stylus. Uh, so that's one of the nice things about the stylus. Stylus also supports handwritten input and pressure sensitive input, but it's not quite as responsive as some other third party or some other uh, devices like one from uh, Wacom or uh, Ntrig. So for instance, let's go ahead and try to uh, write something. Now my handwriting is awful. Um, but sometimes it's just not even hitting the screen, sometimes it's not noticing when I lift the pen and you sort of wind up with these extra lines. So uh, artists, people with better handwriting, others might have a better experience. And it does support some pressure sensitivity, which is nice, but it's, um, I don't find it to be necessarily the easiest device to use with a pen. It's nice to have the option, it's about a $30 accessory, um, but it's not my favorite accessory. My favorite accessory is the $40 folio case, which uh, one quirk about it is that once you get it in the case, it can be very difficult to get it out. Popping it in is incredibly simple, and then you can cover it up and carry it with you. And there's a cutout on the back for the rear camera, which is nice. Um, what really makes it special, though, is you can then prop this up at a variety of different angles. I'm just trying to get a better view here. Here we go. Um, so you can see we can prop it up here, we can prop it up here. It's uh, not quite as sturdy necessarily as uh, having a you know physical keyboard top type thing that you can put on your lap, but I have actually used this. It's solid enough to put on your lap if you're reading or watching a video and don't want to hold the device in your hands. So uh, overall, I really like the uh, folio case. Uh, $40 seems like a bit much for a case for a, a tablet that sells for $300, but it's definitely uh, a nice device to have, especially if you are using an external keyboard. You can prop this up and use it a little bit more like a laptop that way. So uh, overall, in terms of experience, um, it gets uh, about six hours of battery life under heavy sort of traditional Windows style use. That's uh, using desktop mode and surfing the web and uh, composing documents and using Microsoft Office and so forth. Um, it gets closer to nine hours of battery life if you're doing lighter tasks like, say, a little bit of web surfing using this uh, uh, that's metro or full screen mode. Um, what do I want to do here? Let's take a look at, oops, that's actually not what I was looking for. Just wanted to show you that it does have Microsoft Office installed. And that comes preloaded. Uh, again, a little bit easier to use if you had a physical keyboard, but you can type this way and it would be easier if you were holding it maybe and doing some thumb typing. So powerful device, inexpensive device, uh, decent battery life. Now the biggest problem though is that it does a lot of what other devices already do. If you have a smartphone, an Android tablet, an iPad, uh, you could use this as a replacement, but there just aren't as many high quality Windows apps for tablet usage as there are Android and iOS apps, I would say. And in terms of uh, your overall experience using it for uh, sort of notebook or desktop replacement, it's a little bit slower, the screen's a little small, and um, it, the fact that there's only one USB port, and that's the same one that you use for charging it, makes it a little bit difficult to use uh, for those purposes. So during my review time with this, I've sort of enjoyed using it, but I've rarely used it because just for almost any task I can imagine, it makes more sense to grab my Nexus 7 tablet or my uh, Samsung Ultrabook. So uh, while I think that this is definitely a decent value, it's definitely also not the best device for everybody. You can find more details at Lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.